welcome back. In case you have been with us since we began the show, we really appreciate your time and company. We continue to invite your thoughts, questions for this discussion that we are having this particular time as we delve into the education sector, looking at whether we are getting it right. And we began on just talking about the competency-based curriculum and the issues emanating from the junior secondary school dilemma and challenges. And I'm hosting this morning a panel of three, two gentlemen and a lady on my far right I'm having in studio this morning um, with Shimiwa Nabina Buera, the Member of Parliament for Lugari Constituency, who also sits as a member of the Education Committee of the National Assembly. We also have with us Lina Anyango, an education expert, a CBC consultant for Merisha School, and we also have with us Omboko Milemba Mwishmiwa for Emuhaya constituency, who is the national chairperson of COPET. Gentlemen, lady, thank you for staying on. Before we went on the break, Lina, Mwishmiwa um, Nabuera had mentioned quite a number of you know, issues that should help us as a country think in a bigger picture if we, to look at the challenges that are affecting JSS, not just, not just JSS, but the competency-based curriculum in general. Um, the teachers alone is not the only challenge, he says. We have issues to do with infrastructure here. Kids who have never even stepped their foot in a laboratory, which is a very pivotal part of the successful implementation of the competency-based curriculum. Mm -hmm. We have even the content, which is a challenge. He was saying earlier that um, science and, and, and maths, you know, has been crippled based on how we did our recruitment. I'm sitting here and I'm concerned. If you're to take us back to the vision of, of, of CBC and hearing these challenges that we are still experiencing eight years down the line, how do you describe, you know, our, our nearness to attaining the possible outcomes that we wanted to achieve as a result of the competency-based curriculum? I think we are very far. And I like that he has brought up the point of mathematics and sciences not being taught in our public junior secondary schools. Mm -hmm. That therefore means that we are gradually discriminating these students from, who will be coming from public uh, junior JSS schools from continuing with the pathway of the STEM, leaving it only to those who have been schooling in uh, the, the private sector. So that's a very big challenge. And I think that is why the private sector partnership with the government is coming in. The issues we are talking about, do they resonate on the private side of yeah yeah and that's th that's now the point i want to, br yeah? to, to bring yeah, most private schools i think um, even when the ministry of education officials are going around schools seeing which private schools can be uh, given the registration to 100 jss one of the things they were looking at is do you have a lab yeah but i have been in a number of private private schools and i've hosted these quality assurance guys they have to see the lab they have to see uh, mm. is it uh, equipped and you, you see that they're not doing the same when it comes to the, to the public side. So it's, the, 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 it's skewed. It's skewed. The, they're the ones who are supposed to meet the threshold, it's, the private schools, but yes. the public, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. And that is a problem because uh, we are now gradually widening the gap between the students who are going in the private schools and the one going in the, in the, in the public schools. Mm -hmm. And that will be a problem. Uh, we currently know that... Uh, the most well-paying jobs are in the field of STEM. And most private schools, like the one I'm consulting for, Mauritius School, they've really heavily invested in, um, in the matters of STEM. Mm -hmm. So you can now imagine a student in a public uh, JSS school who has never seen a lab. This is, year, this is year eight. Next year, they'll be year nine. After year nine, they should be choosing the pathway to go. So we are... Um, we are intelligently telling those students from the public schools that your path is for social sciences, the STEM path leave it to the students who went to, to the public schools. Mm -hmm. And I think that is something that the government should open its eye to and see that we are now widening that gap and eventually it will widen even the gap in their income. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm listening to what she's saying and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it this way. It's not an educational issue. It's not an education crisis. It's actually a generational crisis. These are children who their future actually depends on this particular curriculum. Uh, what they become in life depends on this. Are we saying then that we are killing a generation? Very well. Definitely. Yeah? We are killing a generation. And uh, uh, before I tackle that, I must pick it from where I live. So those teachers were on the streets called JSS. Uh, further, they were, their matter was exacerbated recently by the court judgment, which uh, Honorable Nabura talked about, and which clearly spelled out that the Teacher Service Commission should not employ them on a temporary basis. 
Now that became the fireworks. And that's why we are where we are. We thought the that was in order, their favor. The last order, it was in their favor. Uh -huh. The last order was to extend to, 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 to August. And uh, I think the idea of the judge, I don't know, I'm not a judge, was actually possibly to give the Teacher Service Commission and government time to fix that problem. Having said that, uh, in the matters that have been spoken about generally around education, education must now be treated, uh, JSS must be treated as a crisis and a national crisis. It's not just uh, an easy matter. JSS must be fixed as a national crisis because it's a generation that we are dealing with and we are casually dealing with it. When Nabuera of the Education Committee says he's aware, and I'm also aware, there are no maths, science teachers in the public JSS schools, it means, like mom, madam says here, we are killing a generation of all those students who are in the public JSS uh, to take any other subjects or studies that are related to science, and you are killing our generation. And therefore, this is something that must be fixed. And we must sacrifice as a country in order to fix it. It's good it's coming at a time when we are actually making the parliament as, uh, the, the, the budget as parliament. And I would be asking actually members of parliament, the education committee and everybody else, that could we rearrange the funding in the budget so that we fix GSS because the generational crisis. And if we don't fix it now, mm. it means that these students will never recover mm. and we shall lose that human resource within this package. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We could kill Adam in the budget. We could kill money is going to security, for instance. Take something there. Because if there's 500 billion going to security, for instance, to fix GSS here, mm. we just need about 50, 50 billion. Yeah. Mm. And mm. I think you should speak on that. We must sacrifice something to fix GSS immediately and CBC. Mm -hmm. Because this is so dear to this country than a dam which you could miss now a road which you could miss now, a security thing which you could miss now, and many other priorities. And I hope the budget and the members of parliament are the ones to fix this. So when we go to parliament, let's deal with CBC fixing as, as, as a crisis. How will we have teachers in the grade nine next year? I proposed earlier that these students go to second schools nearby mm -hmm. so that they can start enjoying the facilities of the, the limited teachers who are there because next year there's no form one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The class will be free. But the how, teachers how long are, will we keep changing this, this you know? When you are in a crisis, how long will we keep shifting things? Because Safi, they were supposed to be domiciled in, in a crisis, primary You must get out of a <laughs> crisis. If, yeah. if the budget, if the committee of education is saying there's no money for grade, uh, for grade nine, take them to secondary. Let them just join like uh, the normal Form 1 students and let the teachers who are in secondary, who will not be teaching Form 1, start teaching them immediately. Otherwise then, we retain them where they are, they will be killed for all year because they don't have the teachers. Right. Let them start enjoying the toilets there, start enjoying the facilities there, the teachers there, the fields there. I think it would be one way of giving a solution to this. Mm. I, I, I think it should be dealt with. Like immediately. Mishmiwa, how do we fix this? And is money the problem? Uh, uh, it is attitude that is the problem <laughs> on, on this issue in this country. Is, is it money that we need? It's, it's not money. <laughs> and, and I've said this, in a budget in excess of three trillion, Uh, and in a country where 65% are youth, 65% of that budget must be invested in that youth. If you want to, to, to get it right, you have a population which is 65%. You have three trillion shillings. And if you are to, let, let me not even go there. If you are to invest 45% of that budget in the youth, mm -hmm. which of 75% of that money goes into what is critical for the youth is education and skill development. What else would you want? So the, the issue is not money. The issue is the attitude of the government mm -hmm. and the attitude of the Kenyan populace. Why am I saying this? We cannot keep on t talking about what happened in Malaysia, Singapore, 
Hong Kong, India, and China without understanding that they invested heavily in education and training to get there. They invested heavily. Mm -hmm. So for me, the first thing would be, can we open up the budget for education? The ceiling of the budget for education. That, that, that's, that, that's where we are. We are at about 640, 660 billion. Can we allow the budget for education to get to 750? We need money to develop infrastructure. By the way, what Mboka has not said here, which I need to say here, is that even the classes for grade nine, we have not started building. Mm -hmm. This is Be because the money, the money was supposed to come to CDF through conditional grant. Mm. The conditional grant has not hit the CDF officers in the in the constituencies. Mm -hmm. So it's a, I'm telling you, it's a question of attitude. I agree with the Honourable Mboko. If we look at our budget, just the way it is, we will get money to fix education. What can wait? Our investment in military infrastructure can wait. Because we are not at war, and we are not planning to go at war with any country. Our investment in that area can wait. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we need to rethink our strategy on brick and mortar. What is this obsession in this country that we spend so much money on issues of construction, dams, I mean, houses, and please. Fix education. Education will fix for you the rest. Once you have an educated community, you have a skilled community, people are creative and innovative, they fix for you the rest. Mm -hmm. Finally, finally, I want to pick from where she left, but add something very critical here. Whereas, I am sitting here as a member of parliament for Lugari. If I look at the architecture of the pathways, there is a possibility that rural constituencies will not have their children doing STEM as a pathway. Mm -hmm. mm. That's the crisis. That's the crisis, yeah. yeah. And therefore, there must be a deliberate plan a deliberate plan. Otherwise, we will disenfranchise people, children from rural constituencies from getting to the pathway of STEM. Mm -hmm. In fact, even more interesting, despite the fact that where I come from, we play very good football, very good uh, rugby, very good uh, volleyball, uh, very, very good basketball. <laughs> Art and sports may even be more interesting that we may not get there because the schools have no facilities. Mm, mm. So that's why I'm saying members of parliament, members I of included, parliament. Members of parliament. it's not about education committees, mm. members of parliament must agree to us. open up the budget us. for education. Us. 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 They must agree to open up the budget for education. Us. That is the solution, not for me, not for government, but for a generation. What can we do for a Kenyan generation mm. that is endangered? Yeah. And uh, the, that message must be very clear. And uh, to all of us, me included, it's not a matter of a union, it's no, a matter no. of a person. It's or, a, a, or a political parties. Not even a political party. It's a matter of saving a generation. The ball is in the hands of us members of parliament. We know the budget is made by the executive, but it's brought to to, to parliament to make certain changes. We must stand out, and I'm happy now we are three in this show, <laughs> and actually uh, defend the budget for education. We the prime target of saving the CBC. All right. And allocating money, even if it means a whooping 100 billion, mm. let it go to CBC, and let's fix this thing All right. for a generation. All right. <laughs> Lina, as, as we are just about to allow Mwishima Kamuren to also weigh in on the matter, you know, this issue of 
the, 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 the almost half the country, it's even could be even more of, of the children who could be locked out of uh, the STEM subjects and that, it, that in essence means STEM careers in the future is something we should take seriously. And we are talking at a time when we have unmotivated teachers who claim they are being forced to teach subjects they did not specialize in. And they're just doing it for the sake because it is the terms of the job that demand mm. for them. Talk to us about the gravity of having a teacher who has not specialized in something, being forced to teach a subject just to make do with what is there and let's move because the train already left the station. What is the gravity of what we are doing to our children by doing that? Yes, let me repeat by saying again that we are messing with the lives of these children. Uh, time is one thing you cannot reverse. And we are doing, um, we are playing cards with people's future. Yeah, I think if the members of parliament with me here, if they had their children in the public schools, probably the things could have been different. Mm -hmm. Yes, because um, the type of, the level of joke that is happening in the public school, it should not be accepted. Yeah. I don't know how, for example, I can take uh, Mwishimiwa here and I ask him to teach for me a lesson in, um, which one can I pick? Yeah, a Kiswahili lesson for that matter. Something you have no content about. Personally, when doing my... Mwishimiwa, can you teach Swahili? <laughs> <laughs> when doing my KCSE, I did well in Kiswahili. I got mm -hmm. a B plus. Mm -hmm. But right now, my child in grade three, when she asks me to help her with her Kiswahili assignment, I get stranded. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine if that is the person who is supposed to be teaching somebody in junior secondary, somebody who has got only three years to decide what he, he, he wants to do in the future. Please let us be serious about uh, these children's future. And like he said, please, can we open up the budget for education? Let us give these children quality <coughs> education because most investors, uh, they believe in, this, in, in the structures, the brick and mortar, like he has said, mm -hmm. building the schools, building the lab, building all those things. But the most important person in that implementation is the human resource. This teacher, the quality of this teacher who is going to handle this, uh, this learner. Yeah, they, I think there's a statement which says, uh, an education system is only as good as the quality of its teachers. Mm -hmm. So if the quality of, his, of the teachers teaching our students, we are not comfortable with it. We are not sure about the competency they have to handle some of those learning areas. Are we really sure that we are not messing up these children? Mm -hmm. All right, Mushimua Kamuren, Karibu Sana. Charles Kamuren is the Member of Parliament for Baringo South constituency. We are talking here about the dilemmas in the education sector from where I sit, Mushimua. I don't know what concerns you most. For a better part of last week, you were speaking very passionately about some concerns you had about how the budget for schools is suddenly shrinking and it's touching even on the most critical thing as a meal for children who it's, it's a privilege where you come from just to have a food you know, in the schools. I, I understand something has changed to that effect, but talk to us about your most pressing concern in the education sector. Thank you, uh, thank you. And also thank you for welcoming me here. These are serious issues, mm -hmm. specifically in education. And I want to thank you that uh, we have this subject so that also Kenyans can debate on and every ball will go to parliament. And it's good that uh, now members of parliament are having concern on this. Specifically from my constituency, we have a lot of challenges, which is touching education. Mm -hmm. One being now, if they will not come up with the increase in the terms of food, providing food in schools and a school feeding program, mm -hmm. if they will omit that, then there will be no education. In, in the budget that we are currently budget, talking about? There will be no education mm -hmm. because that food is what is giving the enrollment, the number in schools, specifically in uh, regions like where I come, that is rural areas, semi-arid, where there is also punditry, when there is all, where areas that people are being affected by water as a result of these floods. So food is very necessary in schools to keep the children going. And the other concern is what they have said very well, is about uh, enhancing budget for education. Because when you come to these areas where we have punditry, education is the only hope to change the mm -hmm. attitude, to change the lives of those people, to leave those behaviors. 
and uh, be like other Kenyans, be like other, other people in the world. So, so as much as we treat it as a security issue, we should also look at the mindset yes. and how education can transform yes. minds in those regions. Exactly, because even if we take uh, so many soldiers there to control those bandits, but if you don't educate the people from that region, then the same thing will be there all throughout the years. And you know, these ones are Kenyans. We need to be equal. So the best way is to enhance education. Build boarding schools in those regions, take those children to go to school, build the infrastructures, the classes, all what's necessary in schools, and then also you change the attitude of those people. Mm -hmm. And that one will be a long term solution to this problem. Mm -hmm. Just before but the major concern is this if we cut the budget of education and we are not considering all this, then it will be an, a big challenge. Mm -hmm. I know the government where we are at the moment, we have a lot of challenges knowing that the economy and the, the climate change and all these things that has come in place. But there is other budgets that we cannot play with, and that is education. Yeah, education why, why, why take money necessary. for food for children? Yeah, why? <laughs> that's some of the reasons. <laughs> but I, I, am, I am happy that the, 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 the chair of, uh, of, of, of uh, budget and appropriation was here mm -hmm. last, eve, last uh, night. And he did say that they, they are returning. It's, yeah, why, but uh, why did they even think of removing? <laughs> then, then my question is this: Who was removing? Them? <laughs> and then now, where if the, if they are returning, that is very good. We are welcoming that because you know, budget is a process. I agree with him. Budget is a process sometimes. Maybe with the wisdom of those who are working on this, they can, they came up and they saw other solutions is better than uh, than, than than the feeding program. But because we are there, and the majority of the members of parliament are for food in schools, and uh, that is the tune. We won't let this one go, because this is about the future. Mm. Kenya is about the future. Right. It's not about the present life. All right. So now, I agree with them. I saw even what they were talking about, that uh, there is incre increase in terms of allocation to security. Yes, with me, because I'm coming from those areas, yeah. we need those... Uh, equipments that is needed because those soldiers there are really suffering. We need to equip them with, the, with, the, with what the, it's necessary mm -hmm. to compete and also to control those punditry in those regions. But we should not learn or we should not subtract the food for the children. Not, we, not, sec not security, yes, but not at the expense of the children. Yes. That's what you're saying. Uh, yes. uh, okay. <clears throat> <laughs> let, let me start by saying this. Mm -hmm. As a country, we got a new constitution and agreed that education was a right. Yes. Basic education is a constitutional right. We, we, we must start from there. That because we agreed that basic education is a constitutional right, then as a country, we developed 100% transition policy. Mm -hmm. With it, it comes a cost. How do you achieve making education a constitutional right? Because not just enough to write it in the constitution. You must leave it. Number two, how do you achieve 100% policy? And, and I've, I've, I've always said this, the people in treasury, must also agree that there are people out here who understand this country and can help them. That's why we went into public participation. And they need to listen. Let me tell you one thing we can do and reduce the budget of security. One, one. The schools on the border area, for example, where he comes from and the Pokot, you make all those schools boarding the Pokots and the two gains will all be in that school. No one will go and attack. Because their children is there. I mean, you don't need the, the, the police, for sure. <laughs> they, they themselves will the, protect. Their children are there in that boarding school from both sides. Who will go and kill his child? <laughs> it will not happen. What a suggestion. And that's why I've been telling my colleagues, even in the education committee, we need to look for money to build boarding schools as a buffer. I can mm. tell you. Because in all our communities, including mine, the moment you have children in a place 
or women, you don't attack that place. It, it is it, 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 it's a written law, unwritten law. So you, 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 you will have used, you will have achieved two things by building that boarding school. One, you are ensuring that you are improving the educational livelihood of this community. Therefore, change of mindset and attitude. And secondly, you are managing your security issues comfortably. Let me tell you, the 3.9 billion or 4.8 billion for food, we actually need extra money for food. If you have to improve on access of education in the informal sector, <coughs> the, Kibare, the Kiberas, the Madares, Kisumu Ndoko in Kisumu, you know, what would keep children in school? Because they are scavenging is food. In pastoral communities, what would make them sedentary is food. In hard to, li to live areas, mm -hmm. parts of El Kao Marakwet, you know, there are parts in Nyanza, like right now areas that have been ravaged by, by, by floods. How do you keep those children in school? Mm. Their, their parents have no homes. You must provide food. And that's why we are saying that the education budget as a whole, in infrastructure, mm -hmm. curriculum delivery, and in human resource, TSC, which is human resource, and more important, quality assurance. And I want to insist on this, that we can do all these good things. We can have good teachers. We can have mm. good, good schools and all that. But without quality assurance right. to ensure that the calligram delivery is effective, we are wasting. We are failed. Then I'm coming to you. Mishmua Mboko, there is something you wanted to add to that. I mean, if, in fact, your question was who even thought about removing that money in the first place? Who even thought that food for children is a luxury we cannot afford as a country? Let's yeah, remove we, it and save these 4.9 billion shillings. Yes, we, we know there are challenges of budgets and uh, monies and uh, the exchequer and uh, collection of funds. But uh, even having thought of uh, removing money from the food program of children was very unfortunate. And that shows you a sign of wrong planners mm. at the mm. Treasury. Very well. Because uh, for them to have made an attempt to actually pick that money and take it away, it means they don't see the importance of mm. that particular money. And even in the near future, possibly, they will be still scavenging around that area. Mm. You would wonder why planners at the Treasury are thinking of reducing the education budget at a time when we need to add it and actually open the ceiling <coughs> a particular education budget. Because like my colleagues have said, it is that food that keeps the students in school, especially in the arid areas. And most of don't forget the slum areas where we, most of the children are not going to school uh. in the slum areas. Even in this city, uh. most of the children are not going to school in the slum areas. So therefore, that money needs not only to be refenced, but also added uh. so that we can have food in school. President Moy, as long as it was, because I was in possibly class five or six or eight, uh, telling you notice the need to associate, to collaborate food with education. That's why I introduced the Moi milk, mm -hmm. which I was a beneficiary of. Maziwa Yanyai. Oh, you've taken Maziwa. us back. I'm a, I'm a beneficiary. <laughs> Maziwa and you can see beneficiaries are here. Yeah, I'm a beneficiary. Not me. <laughs> I'm telling or did I just you, say how old I am? <laughs> Maziwa Yanyayo did a magic in mm. what is now being called a 100% transition yeah. Yeah. without walking around schools, doing, uh, do, doing information in the villages yes. that takes students. <coughs> students went to school naturally yeah. because they were going to take milk. So you did not need a Magoha to walk in the slums like no. he was doing to tell students to go to school. Yeah. All the pastoralist uh, students who are not in school went to school. All the slum children went to school and everybody went to school because they were going to take milk. Mm -hmm. In the course of taking milk, they got education and have come up as resourceful people to help this country. So the food program in the areas where it is needs to be fenced, but again, at the same time, to be added. I used to provide lunch in my schools in Mohaya, not as CDF, 
but just as giving back to the society. I've done it for more than uh, six years, since 2017, mm -hmm. and it did magic. The first year, 2017, we had an enrollment of class eight of about 2,000 students. By the time I was leaving that program, because I left it last year, because I thought government would be providing food, the enrollment in class eight had gone to 4,100. Mm -hmm. You can yeah. see how food correlates very well yeah. mm -hmm. with attendance. With learning. Mm -hmm. Let me indicate there are other areas of motivation, because you yourself, you talked about motivation of, of teachers. Mm -hmm. There are many teachers now mm -hmm. not in JSS, but in the mainstream uh, system who are actually yearning for promotion. I want to plead with my colleagues mm -hmm. in parliament that again, we can fix this. It's because good you are, are one, so <laughs> even as you plead. Of course, I will be putting it in parliament. But you know, you need support. You need a massive <laughs> yeah. number. Mm. You need not only the two members of parliament who are here, mm. but you need a hundred or something members of parliament to support this. And it affects them, not only as individuals, but also their constituents. All right. That we support, <clears throat> that we actually open the ceiling for the education uh, budget and have a good chunk of money to promote teachers. There All are right. teachers who have not been promoted. Who are, period of 18 years, 10 years. And when you talk to the Teacher Service Commission, they tell you we don't have the budget allocation for promotion. In this budget, the only money allocated for promotion is 1.2, is 1 billion. And the Teacher Service Commission was asking for 2.5 billion. But that's still a paltry drop in the ocean. What we need for promotion is about 17 billion so that all the teachers who have stagnated for all the years can be fixed. Now, let me finally summarize by telling you what we need to do as parliament, as a government, because we have to work in cohort with the treasury and the executive all right. so that they understand. This you, is very important. I'm going to allow you to give me that as, as we go and take the round of what solutions do we need to fix what is ailing <coughs> the education sector. I'll start with you. Um, Lina, I'm just listening to all that we have shared here, and we seem to be having a very big problem, much bigger than we, some of us have even begun to notice. How do we begin to fix it? You can even borrow from practices that have worked elsewhere. Mm -hmm. How do we begin to come up with a comprehensive education system that will work, that will help us achieve the results that we want to achieve in our learners? And where do we start? <laughs> yes, um, the solution is our attitude. Mm -hmm. We have to appreciate that we can only change this nation by improving the quality of education for our students or our learners. That is where to start from. And um, to do that, we need, we, we need money. So more budget, budgetary allocation should be directed to education so that we can have um, qualified teachers, we can have uh, enough infrastructure and I can tell you that even the retooling training that um, these teachers are going through for them to embrace CBC, I can tell you for a fact that it is not sufficient. Yes, it is a one, one week session. You are taken through what CBC is. It is like a crash program. It's a crash program. And after that, you're supposed to go back <clears throat> and implement it. Yeah, ideally, uh, and what I've seen work, work in, the, um, in the private sector is that they have a routine professional development program that at least once per week or once per month, they have a session where there's a, uh, there's a modeling lesson to actually help the, the teachers to see how are we supposed to be implementing this CBC. I can tell you for a fact that most of these classrooms in our public schools, we are teaching 844 with the, under the cover of mm -hmm. CBC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they are, the activities for the learners are not there, the teachers, that even we still have some teachers who are still um, concentrating on <laughs> grading the learners, who is the best, who, who did not do what, because the software the of the teachers, the mindset. mindset of the teacher is still 844. So there's a lot that needs to be done in terms of capacity building these teachers to embrace this CBC fully and so that we can also get its benefits here. Yeah. Mm Mushima -hmm. Kamuren, where you come from, when you look at this subject we're discussing CBC, how does it look like? I was looking at schools in that region through a report I was working on last week. It's very unfortunate. Several of the schools have not even opened mm. as we speak today. We are not even talking about classrooms not having students. Do we even have teachers? Do we even have this laboratory that we're talking about this morning in, in your region? How, how, is it, how is this coming along? I did say uh, when you compare 
uh, some of our regions, like what, where I come from, Baringo South, and generally Baringo, with other regions of semi-arids with a lot of challenges. It's not like what is happening in other, uh, in, in other parts of Kenya. There is a lot of differences. And you know, it is a constitutional right that every child should get mm. education. But the, the parameters that is being used, there is a lot. And I want to call upon each and every stakeholder in this country and the leadership and parliament specifically, that we need to be fair to each other, to other Kenyans. Because uh, like where I am, I have almost the three schools that we have not opened as a result of these floods, mm -hmm. because people were living in those, in, the, in those schools. They were rescue centers? Yes, they were rescue centers. Are they still rescue centers? Yeah, they are still rescue centers. So Although are we are now working on modalities of uh, letting the, the children to, to proceed with their studies, but using the same, same place. Mm -hmm. I have around uh, nine schools that has been closed as a result of punditries. For almost some of schools, almost 19 years. Mm -hmm. Nobody has opened those schools, like a school like Galecha, Rukus, uh, Laramuru, uh, Partalo. Mm -hmm. We have not opened those schools, nine of them. Uh, we have said this all through. I know the government is struggling, but we need to be fair because this displacement has an impact to this, to this budget. Even if we make a good budget to the nation, while others are crying, we are not fair to each other. So there is a lot that we need to do. Even if we say now the economy is improving, which is very good, it's improving. But there are others who are still suffering down there. So I expected that this such a budget will consider on how to return people back to their homes. Specific amount allocated on this. Mm -hmm. Specific amount in the Ministry of Education that is going back to where the schools are not opened. Now they should come up with a, a, a program and money for these schools to open up. In terms of building these schools, establishing the teachers there, posting teachers there, building boarding schools the way you did say very well, and uh, equipping them all through. Some schools but you can see now, they bananas. are just making budget, the normal budget, mm -hmm. as if there's nothing is happening other, in other regions. Where do they want these people to be in the next 10 or 30 years to come? They want them to be criminals? Are, not, are they, are they not, not Kenyans like other Kenyans? Mm -hmm. That is where there is, we need to be fair to each other. So this budget process should not be only, only uh, I mean, uh, this specific period. It should be continuous and they should roll out because I blame those who are in, in higher offices. Removing even this school feeding program, it's because they, don't, they are not in touch with what's happening down there. The ministry itself is also part of the blame. Where were they? Because I saw even the peer saying, there is no money. Where were they when this money was removed? If <laughs> treasury was me messing up with their budget. But, but the peers where, 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 where were they? That it it even, sounded very helpless. Yeah, 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 it yeah, sounded yes. like there was nothing they could do. Where were like they? they were even intervene, calling on members of parliament to, um, to intervene. Uh, yes. We have nothing. Our hands are tied as a ministry. Then, then, Come in and help <laughs> us. Then now, my question is this. You can see there is, there is, you know, the president has come up with bottom up. But it's like there is no sense. Eh? Mm. Those who are up there are still behaving as if they are up there. They need to go to bottom down there mm. and rearrange things down there. Yeah. Because they are not following the, the, the rule of the game but of said, Kenya Kwanzaa. We are suffering there. I expected those who are in those offices always down there, listening to the people there, programming these things, coming up with a budget which is driven by the needs of the people down there. How many of them in these terms of directors and all these quality assurance and all the others who are making these budgets have been in Baringo South so far? How many have they come? I was going around there. It is the county commission that is the most senior person. And my DCC, my governor, myself, we are the ones there. Where are they? This is Kenya. This is Kenyans. Where are they? And that is why they cannot make any budget. Right. That is why they are going to an extent of removing school feeding program in the budget. Because you see, and because pay. there is now a lot of, uh, <laughs> we are making a lot of uh, complaint. Now we are being promised. But to how much? How much is coming to me? In fact, we are, we are in, the, in future, we need to come up with a budget. And we shall agree. Members of parliament should take the lead over here. Mm. If they are to remove, then 
I will even propose that we have now through the consequences. Yeah. We, we allocate money through the consequences mm. because the members of parliament are very concerned on this and we are always in touch with the people. Mm. Mm. We are suffering. I went around recently. I saw the suffering my people are. And when I ask happy, yeah, they are saying there is enough food <laughs> while my people are lacking. Mm. They are in, in a mess food. at the moment. Mm. And when you come and see the documentations, they are saying we, 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 we have given enough food to all Kenyans. Who, who are these Kenyans? Mm. If not a child. If, if not that, that child. Now these schools have not opened. It. There is no enough food. Where, where, where are we? Surely. So there is a lot to be discussed right. on this. We may not end everything, but we, this is a start. Right. And this is the way to go. Yes. As I started, my first statement, you remember, I say that when we are looking at this issue of education, we must look at it comprehensively. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> In fact, the papers today have something very critical that should send us thinking as a country. COSIP released student placement yesterday. Mm -hmm. And if there is anything, an indictment in our process of education is those results. 47,872 students who attained C plus and above did not choose to go to university. They did not go into the portal. Or when, they went, they, into, or when they went into the portal, they never completed the process. Do you know the reason? I have the reason. Because of a number from my constituents who have talked to me, they say, Mwishimua, a child of M I said, I have opted not to go. To. I said, why? When I went there, I wanted to study medicine. And when I said, the cheapest was 480,000. And when I calculated with this new funding, my, my parents told me, I have siblings in school. Mm -hmm. Their contribution of 42,000, 48,000, they cannot afford. That is an indictment. And we should be concerned that a whooping 47,872 students who got C plus and above, we, do, we cannot account for them. Interesting, the chances in the medical colleges, 88 of them, could only take 17,172. Kuzip has placed 19,000. They are not telling us, these 2,000, where is the budget? How are they going to expand? these colleges so that they can accommodate. They have just sent the children to the college. The principal will be having an extra child. He has no bed, he has no food, he has no material. You know, that is it. As we are talking about this, I have two colleagues here from parliament. I've put this vehemently through my committee. We have special needs schools in primary. There's no special needs school in secondary in my constituency. I have 17 special needs schools in primary. So the question I keep on asking, where do they transit to? After and that's primary. what Kamreni is saying. Somebody sits in Nairobi here. He, he cannot link mm. the development of the child mm -hmm. from Mufutu in my area that this child is in Mufutu Primary School. He has special needs. He will go through grade, uh, grade six. Where does he go after that Mufutu Primary? Mm -hmm. Does he go back to the parent? Then why did you introduce him to this education? He wants to go to the next level. Mm -hmm. There is no All right. you know, development in that area. Up, yeah. What we are saying, mm -hmm. what we are saying, there is what called the drivers of an economy. You don't curtail the driver of an economy. Mm -hmm. And there is no better driver for a Kenyan economy than education and skill development. Mm -hmm. Tell me which one. Mm -hmm. Which one would be the driver of Kenyan economy if it's not education and skill development? Mm -hmm. If it was not education, Cameron would not be seated here. I wouldn't be here. No, he would be a bandit. Yes, he would be a... <laughs> <laughs> Fact. Oh, my. Fact. <laughs> I mean, I was watching the president yesterday <laughs> making a pitch in the US. And I said, but this pitch you are making 
does not reflect our budget in training and education. That is a, a, a country that has invested in that system that has ended up, you saw the studios he went to. Mm. That's art. You know, creativity. And yet, the person who is supposed to provide money in Kenya does not think the child from Magara in Lugari constituency must have an opportunity to develop to that level mm. because he's not providing funds to enable to be in institutions right. to develop to that level. Mishima Mboka, I also want to hear your thoughts on, on, on the way forward. The topic was education sector. Which way? So which way are we ending this conversation? Uh, I think uh, the junior CBC, junior secondary, and education must now be treated as a serious crisis mm -hmm. that as needs a special attention. So it's a project of crisis. And this should uh, involve all players, including the executive, the parliament, the judiciary should do its job, and all other Kenyans in different places. Because if we don't do that, we shall kill a whole generation of students who are now languishing in what we are calling grade five, mm. grade six, grade seven, and now we are waiting for the ones to go to grade nine. And one way of doing that is actually to put on notice the main players. The main players is the executive. It must be malleable enough to change their thinking to increase the education uh, budget. Mm -hmm. Parliament, and I'm one of them, when we go to parliament, okay. colleagues, we must move amendments. We must convince our colleagues. And I'm hope I'm convincing our colleagues that we treat education as a special area and a crisis this time that needs support. And therefore, we need about 20 billion to fix the JSS crisis, because we already have in, uh, in the budget 8.3 uh, billion. If we added another 8.3, we'd have fixed it. We also need another 20 billion to fix the grade nine, which is now following us. And it needs teachers. And we were told by the specialist here that there are no teachers of maths and there are no teachers of sciences. Mm -hmm. And the teachers of us who are there, history and government like myself and economics are the ones who are teaching maths. I'm telling you I can't teach maths because I stopped dealing with maths a long time ago. And therefore, we have to fix the teachers who will be going to that junior. And then we must then allocate another 20 billion, 17 to 20, mm -hmm. which will actually then deal with general promotion of teachers countrywide in all constituencies. It is not for one person so that those teachers are motivated. If we do that, we would have fixed this thing. And even the pains that we shall undergo because we shall have committed ourselves to sacrificing, like I said there, uh, one project, a dam, a what, mm. a what, will be so beneficial to the whole country because of the multiplier effects that those monies will do. Instead of having that project in one area, it will actually, in a multiplier effect, benefit all the Kenyans because we shall settle the issue of education, especially the CBC, and start moving and save that generation that we are now not taking care of. And remember, we are the mature people. We are the decision makers on behalf of the kids. Hey, we really must make a good decision, as painful as it will be. We must make that. Yesterday, we followed the budget uh, all right. chair here. And you know, even on the issue of funding of monies to go to feeding program, he said he's not very sure if that money is going back to the Minister of Education. Yes, there was an element of other entities. Did somebody hear that? That money, that we should have an assurance and parliament, ourselves must make sure it goes back to the Minister of Education. Okay. It has been doing it well. Yes, yes that mm -hmm. it, let it go money back, where go it back to where not other agencies. So there are issues that I want to call <laughs> our parliamentarians to fix for the sake <laughs> and benefit of our of children. I want yeah, to yeah, something small. Eh? The same, <laughs> if I don't say this, <laughs> it, 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 no, it will help the country. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm asking uh, the mandarins at uh, Treasury to revisit the manifesto of Kenya Kwanza themselves. The president went around promising to increase the money for food. He, actually, it was a campaign pledge. I'm a member of Kenya Kwanza. Yes. yes. It, 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 he, there are two promises that they, we cannot run away from. One, he promised that he will increase the money for food to increase access. 
which which shows he knows the impact Secondly, of school feeding program. he promised that he will uh, fix CBC. How do you fix CBC without money for teachers? How do you fix CBC without money for infrastructure? Can we please leave what we promised them? All right, Mishmu. No, I, I, want, I wanted to the, say this. Eh? That, I'm also a member of Kenya Kwanza. Is with us because Parliament, we have a chance. In fact, when we go to Parliament, brother, it is not a matter of just Kenya Kwanza. Yes, I agree with you. We promised on the issue of, of food to school to increase access and the issue of fixing CBC. This thing cuts across surfing. It is for all the Kenyans. And we as members of parliament, when we go there, we should fix it for the sake of the Kenyan. All right. I, I, I wanted also to answer the same. Eh? I'm a member of Kenya Kwanzaa. And when we come to the issues of a child, it's not issues to do with political positions. It's issues of life and the future for this country. So uh, uh, the way it has been said that there, there will be some money, the chair did say that yesterday, that there is some arrangement of the money for foods in schools, food in, I mean food programs in schools, the way it was. But our worry is that we don't know the sequences of this money that is going to be allocated for this food. We want to appeal that let the money go the way it has, it has been going. Because we, there, is, there is already structures. Any other coming up with another different structure <laughs> might mean something else yes, yes. that some people wanted to, to make a killing yes. out, out of those. Of those. Right. We won't allow that. Yeah. Let the money go to the Ministry of Education. The way, it has been the way, the way things right. have, been, yeah. have been going, because we know them right. and we can follow. So we are informed. Yeah. All right. And uh, the, last, the last part of it is that I want all of us, let us be keen on matters education. education. All right. Employment of children, I mean teachers, are key here. TSE should be given opportunity, the enough money to employ Teachers. Teachers. The junior secondary teachers. Well said, Mishra. That one, that one is very clear. We need more teachers in these asal and semi-arid areas where we are coming from. There is a lot of marginalization in terms of employment in this country. And we need to revisit this. I come from a, 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 where, where there is two communities that is not known. The El Chamus, the Endorois. When you go and assess all these ministries, such a people are not existing. Mm -hmm. And if they are there, they are one or two. And they are Kenyans. So we need to be fair when we are doing this. I agree. We need quality education to be empowered. We need vehicles to be going round because the Ministry of Education don't have vehicle, enough vehicles. And that is why the standards of even this CVC is questionable. We need employment of the teachers. We need food in schools. Well, we need a building of well, uh, well, infrastructures. And then the last one, which is very <laughs> important, very important, <laughs> sorry for <laughs> this, really is, the, is the ECDs. <laughs> the county governments also are left behind. When you check on ECDs, they are not in the same position with what is happening with CPCs oh, all across. Thank you so much. So there is, this is another area that we need to, to see, and specifically the, 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 the salaries for these teachers. OK, we cannot have this conversation and conclude in one sitting. Your final word, you take us through the feedback. Lina, what, yeah. what's your final word? Yes, yeah, so my final word is uh, the latest uh, statistics from on foundational learning and literacy says that uh, the grade four students, the ones who cannot read by grade four, have increased from 60% in 2016 to 70% in 2023. Mm -hmm. Meaning that instead of making steps forward as a country, we are making yeah. steps backward. So begins. this being the year of uh, education, according to the African Union, I feel that the government should now put more focus on SDG number four to look at the access quality and equality of education and also give the private sector a lot of support as they partner mm. in improving quality of education. Thank you, Lina, for that. Now, Jay Musoma says it is sad that we have demotivated JSS teachers in the street. The education sector is a tick, time ticking bomb. One day it will paralyze our economy. Imagine having 600,000 students who passed KCSE but don't want to join university. They didn't even apply for placements in uh, COOPS. Right. A case of giving up. <laughs> we have uh, Salimi, Salimi Mbiaha. You say, Honorable, 
Nabi Nabwera should come clear and uh, tell us how much money they have allocated for confirmation and when. He sits on the Parliamentary Committee on Education, but he is just beating around the bush instead of hitting the nail on the head. All right, we have Engineer Lazaro. Education sector is the backbone of national growth. This sector needs serious attention and proper scheming, or else we are heading to an oblivion. We have Bobo Tieno. We know education sector is in quagmire because CBC was hurriedly implemented without proper structures, a good idea being brought at the wrong time. No wonder JSS learning has been paralyzed by protesting teachers. We have Kalu Lepario. You're saying the transition to CBC or JSS was rushed by the government. This change should have been delayed until the country was ready in terms of infrastructure, budget and content. Uh, proper planning and resources are essential for successful educational reform. Keep them coming now. Kelo Mwalimu, you're saying if the government is serious about implementation of CBC, the following must be done now. Number one, confirm JSS teachers on PNP. And uh, number two, separate JSS from primary schools and appoint administrators. Number three, adequately prepare secondary school teachers. And number four, improve infrastructure. Suggestions there by Okelo Mwalimu. I know this can open another session of conversation, which I don't want to do today. Thank you so much, gentlemen and lady, for creating time for us this particular morning. I've been having a sit down with, uh, from my far left there, Mwishimiwa. Charles Kamuren, the Member of Parliament for Baringo South, Asante. We've also been talking to Mwishimiwa Nabina Buera, the Member of Parliament for Lugari Constituency, who is also a member of the Education Committee at the National Assembly. We also have Lina Nyango, a CBC consultant at Mary Shaw School and an education expert. And of course, Mwishimiwa Mboko Milemba, the Member of Parliament for Emuhaya and the National Chairperson for Kupeta Asante Nisana for creating time for us. And that is how we wrap up the first segment of the interviews we had lined up for you but remember tomorrow is actually the day when we are marking the international day to end obstetric fistula and we are going to shift gears into matters health in just a bit i'll be engaging a panel of two ladies uh, nancy lynn kavuka reproductive health expert and betty nduku kasioka a nurse and a reproductive health coordinator just to discuss how far we have gone as a country in eliminating fistula that conversation coming in just a bit don't go too far <music>